Hey guys, with NHL 21 coming. Hey guys, with NHL 21 coming out, I did want to take you through a little tour of my hockey game collection and basically show you every cover of the EA NHL series um, since its inception with NHL hockey uh, back in 1991. So we'll start right there actually. And I have a couple copies. As you could see there, this is what started it all, guys. The first game. And why do I have a couple copies? Well, look at that side there. One was EA Sports Network. Well, they both were EA Sports Network, but different logos. So, slightly different up there at the top. EASN Presents. Over here, just says Electronic Arts. So after that, we go to NHLPA Hockey, but before we do that, I do want to show you this game. This was a Master System game, Championship Hockey. It's released in Europe only, so you cannot get this game in the States. And this was basically the 8-bit version of NHL Hockey. This is basically, as you can see on the images, a really rudimentary version of the NHL Hockey we all know and love. So... International teams only. It's very interesting to play. Um, like I say, it's quite graphically dated, but if you could get your hands on a copy, I would definitely get it. It's very hard to find, and it's very expensive. Another one here I could show you guys is EA Hockey. This was also released in Europe only for the Mega Drive. Of course, we know it as the Genesis in North America. And this was basically uh, international teams used... Uh, instead of the NHL teams in NHL hockey. And one other, they actually combined it here, EA Hockey and John Madden Football in a doubleheader game. Two games on one card. So we move on to uh, NHL PA Hockey. So we got all the players, now we don't have the teams. So it's a little bit different. But uh, a lot of people like this one. Uh, some people have really... You know, NHL 94, the next game here in the line, is really the classic. But some people really liked NHL PA 93 more so than that. Of course, here is NHL 94. I never really understood what this limited edition sticker was about. I don't think these were released in limited quantities. I actually have about four copies. Of course, it was also released on the Super Nintendo. As was NHL PA, which I also have. Well, we do the Super Nintendo version of NHL 95. Another game that's considered... Some people think of NHL 95 as the classic one, the best one. Now, some people don't know that there was actually a Swedish version of the NHL series with the Elites here in teams. Uh, basically, the Swedish League. It's like a reskin of NHL 95. Swedish only teams in it. So it's... A little different. Uh, it's kind of fun to pop in. I pop it into the Retron. It works in the Retron just fine. And, uh, of course, you see it right there on the shelf. There was also a 96 version. And this was the first time... Next Generation Hockey, I believe that's it. This was the first time that uh, EA ventured into including other leagues, uh, other international leagues, or any other leagues at all. Um, I skipped NHL 96 because I went right to the Swedish version. And by the way, if you to get your hands on the Swedish version, it isn't phenomenally di difficult. You just want to find a website, uh, a Swedish, you know, tradera.com, T-R-A-D-E-R-A.com. Uh, it's like the Swedish eBay. And a lot of times you could find it for a fair price. You shouldn't have to pay more than 25, 30 bucks for one. Now, I skipped NHL 96. I also forgot to mention that there was a Game Gear release around that time. This one's a bit hard to find complete boxed. Took me some time. And that is essentially kind of an 8-bit version there of NHL. That and Championship Hockey. I'd also be remiss to skip the Game Boy versions. Pretty rough. I did not enjoy NHL 95 for Game Boy. I tried playing it recently. It's rough. It's tough. And same with NHL 96. I have a sealed copy here. 
All right, we're on to NHL 97, and that, this is where the series started branching out into the uh, PlayStation and uh, Sega Saturn. So, well, I'll show you the Genesis version first. There's the Beezer on the cover. We will skip over to the PlayStation version. And I remember playing the heck out of this game. This looked so realistic back then. It was exciting, it was new, it was fresh. There's the Saturn version. And you know what? I realized I missed showing you guys maybe the ultimate version of NHL 94 right there, the Sega CD version. Right, NHL 98. I have a lot of copies of this game, actually. It's not easy to find for the Genesis or Super Nintendo. It's just a tough one to find. People love this game because it's really, you know, the basically the best version, in theory, of the 16-bit NHL releases. It had the latest rosters that you could possibly get, the latest teams. The Super Nintendo version is actually quite tricky to find in box, and it might cost quite a bit now. We got the Saturn, of course. This is the last version on the Saturn, actually. Forsberg on the cover. Um, and there was actually two versions on the PS1. There's a very difficult to find, and I don't know why this is so difficult to find, but a Greatest Hits version, which is kind of strange to see a re-release of an EA Sports game. All right, making sure I haven't skipped anything yet. Let's go to NHL 99. Lindros on the cover of that one. And this was actually the only NHL game, EA NHL game, released on the N64 as well. I actually do have a copy of the PAL version, too. No difference there, it's the same game. Um, let's skip ahead to NHL 2000. And the Pronger's on the cover of that. If I recall, there was some disappointment. This is where you started getting, you know, fans were just complaining about the fact that the game was just another reskin or a roster update. This is where you started to get more in-depth user feedback on these games. It wasn't just a casual affair anymore, I felt. Um, I do want to show you a real treat here. Well, this is Marcus Naslin. So this was on the PAL cover. So this is the first time that the NHL series had regional covers. So this was basically the cover that you would have seen in Europe. So maybe a lot of you in North America have never seen this before, but Marcus Naslin was on the cover. Now I have a real treat, because unbeknownst to really anyone, there was actually another cover. And if you go on the NHL series Wikipedia, it lists all the international covers, and I'm going to show you pretty much all of them here. But uh, there was another cover in the Czech Republic at the time, and that's Richard Schmelick, Buffalo Sabres. So, yes, there was another cover in, in the Czech Republic, which is, this one wasn't documented at all. The other ones were actually documented. This one was not documented. And I found it on a Czech Republic um, website that was basically like an eBay. I've seen it a couple times. It's a challenge to find. It's also a challenge to pull out of there because a lot of translating and uh, trying to get through with English and broken... Uh, you know, check, and it works. You find a friendly seller that's excited to send to you. You're a collector. Hey, it's going to a better place. So I found someone willing to send that to me for a decent price, and it took three weeks to get here, and lo and behold, a Richard Schmelick NHL 2000. Um, let's see, what else? NHL 2001, we'll skip ahead here. There's Owen Nolan. That's the international cover. This is a this is a resealed copy that I haven't opened. I have an un, I have an open copy for use. Um, 
This was also first time on PlayStation 2. And that's Yari Lettinen on the cover. And that's actually the international version. That's what you would have seen in Europe. Because, of course, Owen Nolan graced the North American copy. Again, a very rare Czech Republic copy. As you could see, flag right there. And that's Martin Ruczynski. This one was another extremely difficult cover to obtain. You don't see many of those. Even if you dig on some of the you know, deepest, darkest corners of the Czech web, you just don't find them. And I already showed you guys that one, I think. But there is one. There's Yuri Lettinen, PS1. That's the international. There is an NHL 2001 version with Martin Rutinsky on the PS1. I do not have that version. Um, I believe it was also released in Australia, because I've actually seen it on Australian websites, which is kind of bizarre. I did skip... Let's skip back to NHL 2000. I forgot the Game Boy Color with Pronger on the cover. Okay, so let me try to keep everything straight here, and we will go to NHL 2002. Mario Lemieux. Now, this one did not have any regional covers. So try as I might, I have not been able to unearth any cover variations for NHL 2002. There was a Game Boy Advance game. A lot of people like this one because it's basically a 16-bit game. Uh, it's with the teams like the Minnesota Wild. I believe the Predators are in it. Um, so it's basically the latest official iteration of the 16-bit game that wasn't included in later versions of the NHL series as a pack-in with the game. This was the last, basically, standalone 16-bit NHL. All right, NHL 2003. Well, that's the international version. That is Saku Koibu. That's actually the Finland version. Kind of a strange template. His jersey sort of disappears on that white background. I've always thought that was kind of odd. Of course, Jerome McGinley is on the main cover. And, of course, what would it be without just this obscure Czech version? And that's Patrick Elias. And, uh, again, helmet and jersey sort of blend in with that white cover. It's a very odd design choice. Um, I don't believe there's anything else for NHL 2003. So we can move... Oh, well, I can show you the GameCube versions. I do have both the Finland and North American versions of those. And we'll start GameCube NHL 2004. Now, NHL 2004 was interesting. Of course, there was Danny Heatley, the whole controversy with the uh, car crash that killed his teammate. So he was released as the initial cover for NHL 2004. There were no international variants on, on this one. Um, so... What you have here is Joe Sackick was named as the replacement cover athlete midstream after the release. The GameCube one is very rare. I believe it was only actually released in Canada. Uh, I haven't really found it on any North American sites. I found it on eBay from a Canadian seller. Um, it's an extremely rare uh, cover variant. The Xbox version. I have never ever seen the Joe Sackick cover. I don't believe they released another run with Joe Sackick except I have seen it on some international sites. So I've seen a German version of it. I do not have it, but I've seen a German version of the Xbox game. Not a North American one. If the North American one exists, it's exceedingly rare. Of course, there's the uh, PS2 variants. The PC Sackick version is actually quite rare, too. I do have a copy, not right in front of me. Um, but those were the only two copies. Um, and those were the only two cover athletes. NHL 2005. There's Marcus Nasland. 
GameCube. And Oli Jokinen. This was the Nordic cover, I believe they say, or maybe just the Finnish. Probably just the Finnish. It has Finnish language. And those were the only two variants for NHL 05, I believe. Oh, I do have a special PlayStation cover, though. This was fun. So a guy I was buying from in Finland thought it was interesting that I was collecting all these covers. He pulled this out of a game bin out there in Finland. I did not know this even exists. But it's Jokinen in a Finland jersey. And then it just sort of changes there, the lenticular design of the cover. That is pretty cool. I did not know that existed, and for now I only know it exists for the PS2. I haven't seen it for any other. So NHL 06. That's Tuomo Rutu. That is the, this I believe is the, well this is the Finnish cover, but I've heard it described as the Nordic cover. Because it looks like it might have been released in Sweden according to the box. That I am not sure of completely. Of course, Vincent LeCavalier on the cover of the North American edition. And I don't believe it's worth showing you guys every version of that. Move that. And we got NHL 07, which, here's the PSP version. The only, well, this might be the last the last handheld version of the NHL series. NHL 07 on PSP. I think it is. And then we got Henrik Lundqvist. Another capital. Now with the capitals. The Swedish cover on PSP. And Teemo Solani. Oh no. Yeah, that is Teemo Solani. <laughs> for some reason it looks like Yager in the face there at first blush. But of course Yager didn't play for the Ducks. And I believe those were the only cover variants. Here's, of course, the original Xbox. I'm missing the Lundquist Xbox cover, actually. It's one of the few I'm missing. All right, NHL 08. And let's see, who was on the cover of 08? It's Eric Stahl. If we can find him here, here it is. Eric Stahl. And Solani again on the Finland cover. And who do we got down here? Zetterberg on the Swedish cover of NHL 08. Well, let's see, I'm not missing any others. Now by then it had run its course on GameCube. GameCube finished with 06 and Xbox finished with 07. So that was basically, basically it. I do have a Mark Strait cover. Mark Strait. Let's see if we can find that, dig him up. There's quite a big stack. There it is, and it's actually signed by the man himself. Now this was released in Switzerland. That's Mark Strait of then the Montreal Canadiens. First Swiss cover. All right, so we're going to move to NHL 09. And now the series ends on the PS2. This is the last year of it. Get a better view of this. That is uh, Dion Phaneuf. NHL 09, the last PS2 copy. Patrick Elias makes his second Czech version appearance. Daniel Alfredson on the Swedish cover. Mark Streit on the Swiss cover. So there you have it, guys. It's NHL 09 with Alex Ovechkin on the cover. This was his first video game cover, um, and it's only available in Russia. I had actually found a Russian seller on eBay and asked him if he could find a copy of NHL 09 for me. This would have been 
you know, five, six years after this game was released, and he was able to find a sealed copy, so I was really happy about it. I know it exists in PS2 and 360 form. The PS2 version is a little bit difficult to find. They're all difficult to procure, though. I have not had any luck in tracking down the other two, but I'm really happy about having this one, especially now that he graces a cover of NHL 21, so I have them both. Um, he's also on the cover of NHL uh, 2K10 as well, so he's now graced a cover three different times, although most people would only recognize that that's with NHL 21 being a second time, that was actually his third time if you count international covers. And this is a really cool cover, I love it. It's a smooth design, it looks really nice. That's a really tough find, NHL 9 with Alex Ovechkin on the cover. So let's move on. I have a little stash of my PS3 collection here. And I have moved Ovechkin off, and let's take some games off here. So Patrick Kane, NHL 10. Who else was on that? Ooh, this one's a t <laughs> this one's a tricky one. This is uh, Mikhail Butker. This is the Nordic cover. It was released in Denmark and Norway, and it's the only time a cover has been exclusive to those countries specifically. So of course, he's a great Danish player, Butker. He was playing with Coyotes at the time, and uh, this is a. This one's a tough one to find because you really have to find it from a Danish store. I haven't found it in a Norwegian store, but I know it exists also on 360. I don't have the 360 version. I have most of the 360 versions of these covers as well, except for that one. Here's another favorite from my Capitals collection, uh, Nicholas Backstrom. I love this cover. I also have it for 360. All right, and there's Miku Koivu for the Minnesota Wild. That's the first Minnesota Wild athlete on the cover. That's the Finnish copy. And lastly, Mark Streit. He's making quite a run in, in Switzerland with these covers. So here he's on the Islanders. All right, let's uh, stack these up and keep pulling some off here. All right, NHL 11. Uh, we got Jonathan Taves on the cover. So we went back to back Chicago as the North American covers. Mark Streit, NHL 11. That's his last cover, actually. And we'll ch change it up here, as you'll see. And there's the Sedin brothers on NHL 11, the Swedish cover here. All right, so NHL 12, Steven Stamkos. And I had to double back. Uh, here's the 360 version of NHL 12 with Jonas Hiller. I do not have a copy of the PS3 version yet, so I'm showing you the 360. Um, this was released in Switzerland and Germany. And this is the German copy right there. All right, on to NHL 13. And actually, I should probably show you guys NHL Slapshot, too. NHL 13, this is Claude Guru. And this is actually the Stanley Cup edition. This was the special edition released in North America with an embossed cup on it. And there's Roman Yossi. This was a Swiss edition. So this was the only international cover variant released in this particular year. So I said there wasn't another cover of NHL 13, but there actually kind of was. <laughs> so um, this was the Stanley Cup edition released in Finland, but it's Yari Curry. It's a steel book, and this one's a tough one to find actually, but it's not, it wasn't too expensive, but it's, yeah, it's Yari Curry on the cover instead of the Stanley Cup itself. All right, so NHL 14, let's see what we got here. We got Marty Brodeur. And then I believe Roman Yossi again for the Swiss cover. And then I have a special edition here. This is a team from Swedish Hockey League. 
And this was basically the type of steelbooks they released for the SHL Club Editions. I just have one copy just for reference. And as my whole collection falls over. So this was the SM Liga Edition. This is the Finnish League. It's just a slip case on the regular NHL 14. Nothing different about it. Just this slip case with the Lati Pelicans team. I have only found one of these and glad that I was able to get someone to send it to me. So happy to have it, but nothing has really changed with it. So here's NHL 15. This is actually the Ultimate Edition. And that's Patrice Bergeron on the cover. And there's Nino Niederreiter for the Swiss edition. So the second wild player to be featured on the NHL cover. Of course, North American people have never seen a wild athlete on there. But they've been, they've been on the cover of international editions a couple times now with Niederreiter. All right, so NHL 16 was actually called NHL Legacy Edition for both the 360 and the PS3. So, and this is actually considered by a lot of people the best edition to get. And people that don't like the next gen, uh, when I say Xbox One or PS4 editions, tend to gravitate towards this Legacy Edition, so I've heard. All right, so now we're gonna go look at some of these PS4 and Xbox One iterations. So obviously we already looked at 15. You know what, I'm gonna take, this whole stack's gonna just fall over if I don't take it now. So NHL 16, there was also a cover scandal here with Patrick Kane and Jonathan Taves. Patrick Kane was actually taken off what would have been the final cover. So now it's just Jonathan Taves. And for 16, well, that's 15. Let's see, I know I got, well, there's the deluxe edition. And that's Taves, of course, on the Xbox. And there it is. Swiss cover, Nino Nita Rider. I just have it for Xbox, not for PS4. They're kind of tough to get out of Switzerland. It's expensive to ship out of there. I've not found a good deal with shipping. And I'm going to have to restack everything. So NHL 17, that's Tarasenko. I believe he was, no, there was also a need, need a writer here. Let's see. Yep. Deluxe edition. And there's need a writer. And that's actually one of my favorite covers of the NHL series, to be honest. I just love that. That image just looks so smooth on there. I just, I think that's a great image. And for wild fans, that'd be a cool one to pick up. So NHL 18 was actually just its own thing. It was just Connor McDavid, I believe. Now, EA released a cover with Roman Yossi that you could download, uh, but there was never an official cover release of that, of that game, which is kind of unfortunate, really. Okay, so I'm gonna find some NHL 19 here, and I got plenty of NHL 19. P.K. Subban. Not many people, well, I guess Canadians know, but not many Americans know that there's a combo pack in Canada with NHL 19 and FIFA 19. Let's see what we got here. We got the Swedish cover here. William Nylander. And Patrick Liney on the finish cover. And I believe Liney returns on NHL 20, the finish cover. So I do not have NHL 20 of 
Elias Pettersson. Unfortunately, my collection's been decimated all over the floor. Um, usually, typically, what I do is I buy the covers a year or two later because just buying a new game out of Sweden or Finland just makes no financial sense. So I usually am not right on top of it right away because they're plentiful enough that they're not going to go uh, become completely obscure collector's items. They're just fun to have. I'd be remiss if I didn't show you guys NHL, well, the uh, Swedish League and Finnish League versions of the PC series for 2001. This, of course, includes Zetterberg, a very young Zetterberg on the cover of the Swedish copy. These both would install as an add-on for NHL 2001 on the PC. They both include both leagues in it, so you only need one. Um, I'm not sure I even know who's on the Swedish cover, but uh, or on the Finnish cover. But there you have it. Of course, here is the Wii version of the NHL series, NHL Slapshot. This was the limited edition that came with two sticks. I have actually yet to play this. I have a Wii, but I've yet to try it. And I wouldn't mind giving it a spin, seeing if the motion control is anywhere up to snuff. I've heard good things, though. I actually have heard good things. That, my friends, is the Super Famicom edition released in Japan of NHL 94. This one's a fun one to have because it was actually fully translated in Japanese. So you can see everything is in Japanese, even in the game, which is very unique. And if you could get it on eBay, they aren't cheap, but you could usually get a fairly decent price if you keep looking. It's a fun little gem to have, and it plays in the Retron, and it's unique. It's just different. It's a different version of the completely iconic NHL 94. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed a trip down the EA NHL cover collection here. Of course, the only one I was missing was uh, Elias Pettersson and, of course, the new Ovechkin cover for this year, which is coming out real soon. So I'm excited about that. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope to maybe play some of these games and make some YouTube videos out of them for you. Um, so yeah, hope you guys had fun and learned maybe something new about uh, a series we all uh, enjoy and love to play. See you guys later.